Welcome to the Scuba Goat Podcast with Matt Waters. Let's dive right in. Hey there, dive buddies, and welcome back to the show. Now, I know it's been a while since our last episode, and I want to start by saying a big thank you and a bit of an apology as well for that delay. I've been very, very hard at work on something truly exciting, and that's my travel company, Nomadic Scuba. Later this month, we're going to be launching a brand new website, and I'm super stoked to see how it goes, so stay tuned for all the details. But that's not all the excitement on the horizon. Coming up later this month as well is the very first Go Diving show right here in Sydney. It's modelled after the popular UK event, and it's shaping up to be a fantastic experience with a lineup of exhibitors and speakers from all over the globe. Today, we are going to give you a sneak peek at who's attending, what time they'll be on stage, and what you can expect to hear. Now, I may know quite a few of the speakers, but I've called in some help from another industry titan. Adrian Stacey, editor of Scuba Diver Magazine ANZ, and the guy responsible for coordinating this amazing event. Adrian, welcome to the show, buddy. Now, before we dive into the Go Diving show itself, let's take a little step back, get to know you a bit better. So how did you get into scuba diving? Where did it all begin? <clears throat> well, let, yes, exactly. Let's let's start from the beginning then. Uh Diving, I suppose I, I first got into diving uh, when I was 23. I did a around the world trip uh, and about halfway through, I ended up in Cairns. You know, I was keen to have as many different experiences as possible. So uh, when I was in Cairns, uh, I signed up for open water course um, with, uh, I think it was with Pro Dive because they had a little uh, liverboard section as well where you went on a couple of days on the Great Barrier Reef on a liverboard. Uh, yeah. So I did that, uh, and yeah, that was by far and away the um, my, my favourite thing I did on the trip was um, was scuba diving. Absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah, from from there, when I got back home, went back to my uh, my normal job, and when I could, I'd, I'd go out or go off scuba diving. Didn't happen that often, I have to admit, which uh, was a, a shame, but I, I did love it. Uh, then I suppose when I, when I reached about 30, when I was about 30 years old, I, I had an early midlife crisis. Uh, I thought there's got to be more to life than, uh, selling photocopiers in London for a living. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I, I thought, well, I, I love traveling and I love diving. So why don't I, uh, become a dive instructor? So, uh, I, uh, I went to Egypt uh, obviously quit my job told my parents they were uh stunned to begin with but uh sort of saw the the benefit or the uh the wisest of the decision so um or the merits of the decision so yeah i uh i left i think uh, i was about 31 when i eventually left uh went to egypt um and did my open water through to instructor with uh, emperor divers uh, oh, and that okay. was the begin. That was the beginning. Yeah, uh, I then spent the next thirteen years traveling around the world to various different places. So I obviously was probably about four or five years in uh, uh, in Egypt, about four years, a uh, couple of years in Costa Rica, uh, then over to Thailand, uh, Indonesia. Oh, I did a little island in the Caribbean called Sabre. Uh, for a year, uh, Mexico also, uh, and some traveling around in 2014. We went to uh, South America, to Brazil to watch the World Cup and then do some traveling around there. So, yeah, that that was uh, the mo nomadic lifestyle for a while. Uh, I met my girlfriend, who's now my wife, uh, in Thailand, uh, and mm -hmm. she's Australian, which is hence we, uh, we ended up here. So we... Uh, we discovered uh, when we were working in Indonesia in Komodo, we were on Labuan Bajo, and we found out that she was pregnant. So that was the end of the nomadic lifestyle for for us. So uh, then it was uh, a decision to be made: would it be uh, resettling in Brisbane in Queensland, uh, or back to London? Mm. Uh, so. Whilst I love London and uh, ha had a fantastic upbringing there and uh, enjoyed my 20s in London immensely, uh, we thought bringing up a family uh, pro probably would be uh, better off in, uh, in, in Brisbane. Uh, yeah. And after 13 years of travelling around 
tropical and desert environments. Uh, the thought of uh, the, the London weather uh, was not that appealing. No, it's it's um, it's a scary thing when you say that you don't want to go back home, isn't it? And I'm I'm exactly the same. It's just <laughs> it never used to bother me the weather, and then you move abroad and do you know ten yeah. years or so or whatever, and um, go back home. It's the middle of the summer and you're freezing. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it it is. I think I think if you had defined seasons in in the UK, you'd you'd be okay. If it was really cold and snowing through the winter, fine, uh, and hot during the uh during the summer great but it's when all the seasons kind of bleed into one uh with with a couple of weeks maybe of nice weather that uh that it, that it starts to get you down a bit so uh so now i just enjoy going home <clears throat> for a few weeks uh and then coming back to the to the nice weather here uh yeah so yeah so that's that's kind of how that was the my diving career when we first got back to australia uh the scuba diver magazine uh, wasn't wasn't actually uh, running then. Mark, okay. I think uh, Mark and Ross had just set up uh, scuba diver in the UK. So when I was here, I needed to find a job. Uh, and my my CV for a normal nine to five job uh, didn't read fantastically well. Uh, so uh, I got a job. Uh, for a flight center actually working okay. as a travel agent uh specializing in adventure travel mm -hmm. so i did that for four years i think it was and then i left uh in january i, I started doing part-time there and part-time with the magazine with scuba diver a and z because they'd set that up by then <clears throat> and then i went full-time with scuba diver a and z leaving flight center um in January of 2020. So just before COVID shut everything down, I, I managed yeah. to escape the travel agency. My, so my, my timing was fantastic on, on, on that one. Impeccable. Yeah. Yes. I was the other way around. Everything hit. Right then we had, a, we'd spent a considerable amount of money on a website for my travel agency, Nomadic Scuba. Oh. And um, I think it was a week before or 10 days before we were due to launch the website, COVID hit and that was it, destroyed everything. Um, so we were kind of, yeah. or I was I was kind of stuck in that, uh, that COVID torture pot for however long it was. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it, it, it came with its difficulties. As I, say, I was glad I wasn't working for Flight Centre, but still trying to keep the magazine running. <clears throat> Obviously, we had to close down mm. for, uh, well, not close down, but we had to, stop printing for a little while we carried on with the web posts and, and that side of things but i think in the end it was only three months that we we stopped printing for uh and then yeah. uh, and then we restarted again so uh but yeah it was uh it, it was difficult thankfully that's pretty much behind us now i think there's still a a few lingering um aftershocks i think still uh, from flight costs and all that sort of thing from from COVID, but it seems to be uh, mm. in, firmly in the rear view mirror now, which is good. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we're never going to see that kind of thing again. No, no, I don't, I don't think I so. I think well. there will be, I think there'll be wars in every country around the world if it, <laughs> if it went off again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's certainly, there'd certainly be a, a, a few complaints and a few, uh, maybe the odd riot here and there, I think. Uh, mm. Yeah, no one wants to go back to that. So that lands you with um, the big job of looking after the Scuba Diver magazine in ANZ. Um, so that's that was 2020. How uh, what's the what's the growth been like since uh, you, you took on that role? Um, well, it's it's been great. I mean, the uh, the magazine probably when did we start over here? Probably late 2018, beginning of two, early 2019 is when the magazine actually. Started. Started. Yeah, probably early 2019 is when the magazine actually started. So the guys had done a few issues uh, b before um, kind of I got involved. And I knew Mark because I contributed to um, to uh, sports diving when he was the editor of that and had just always stayed in touch with him. Uh, mm. So, yeah, then they started to, to grow the magazine over here and, 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 and knew I was here. So uh, we, we had a chat and, and they offered me the, the job as I say on a part time basis first and then it then it grew. So, yeah, it was um, it, it was good. We 
we'd grown the magazine prior to COVID. You know, we started off, uh, what, 68 pages. Uh, we'd, we'd grown it up to uh, 84 pages. We had a good distribution network. Things were going well. Plenty of people interested in advertising because obviously we're, we're a free magazine. So we, we kind of relied on the advertising revenue. So, yeah, it was all it was all looking good. And then, of course, uh one by one, the uh, as, as, as COVID hit, kind of the reality of COVID hit one by one. All obviously, all the advertisers uh, dropped out, understandably, yeah. of course. Um, so yeah, so that that was that was difficult. But then we restarted, as I say, probably it was only a few months. So we, sh- yeah, when did we restart? Probably towards the end of twenty twenty. And since then, it's it's been good it's been um a pretty reasonable growth rate back up to where we were at, at 84 pages um by plenty of advertisers and yeah things are things that things are going well generally for for the magazine we started uh a north america version of the magazine as well that that started off mm-hmm. just before covid hit uh but that was a quarterly magazine it's now gone up to uh bi-monthly magazine and in uh january next year we're looking to launch uh a german version of the magazine as well oh okay yeah german speaking that time in with the uh with that time in with the boot show at all yes i believe that is the idea um uh yeah and uh and of course there's the uh there's there's the dive show in uh in the uk uh and of course Mm. uh the 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 dive show the inaugural dive show here in in australia later uh this month that's a fantastic lead in mate (laughs) the dive show the inaugural dive show in sydney later this month right on cue you couldn't you couldn't write that (laughs) Uh, good glad, glad that worked well <laughs> but how, how's it coming along how's it you've still got hair so clearly you've not been pulling it out uh not around the back i don't uh but um <laughs> yeah it's uh it it's been uh it's, it's been a steep learning curve i have to admit uh yeah. the first time i've uh i've done a show uh so um yeah kind of we were at uh we were at dima in uh uh, last year uh, mm-hmm. and uh, ross said oh uh, by the way we're we're thinking of doing a dive show in uh, in australia you, you know uk one's going really well we're just going to emulate that in australia so that was obviously november he said when do you think a good time of year would be i was like probably september so he's, he like while we're at dima he, he he found the showgrounds like we had availability at the end of september mm-hmm. uh so th- that's um that's that's when he decided or that's when him and Mark and, and everybody decided we'd uh, we'd do the dive show. So they said, right, you've, you've got nine months or so uh, to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> you've you've, you've now just them. got a lot busier. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I'd also uh, already, I'd already booked a holiday back to the UK to see my family uh, in September. Mm. So uh, we go away uh, on Wednesday couple of days time and we don't get back until like a day before the show so we land we land, <laughs> I know it's awesome timing we land uh we land on uh, like the 20 Wednesday the 25th in Brisbane yeah. uh drop the kids off with their their grandmother and uh and then we fly down to Sydney on on the 26th on Thursday nice uh, so nice looking forward to a nice bit of jet lag for that uh, <laughs> yes uh so yeah it's um yeah, it's it's been as I say, it's it's been interesting. It's been uh, yeah, as I say, a, a bit of a, uh, a steep learning curve. Uh, we took my wife on board as well to to help out because it would have just been too much for me to, uh, you know, to to the magazine and all of the show stuff. So she's been great yeah. helping out, um, dealing kind of with um, with the exhibitor portals and dealing with the customers once they've all signed up and. Uh, you know, kind of the, more the admin yeah. and customer service side of things, uh, which has taken a lot of the strain off me, which uh, which is good. Uh, but yeah, the show's 
looking good. We've um, we're, we're pretty much full. I think we've got one booth left um, to sell that I think there's there's a couple of people interested in. So we should get that sort of finished in the next day or so, just before I go away. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. We're uh, we're all, all excited about it. It's, uh, I think, going to be a bit different to um, anything that's that's been before, certainly in in recent times. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's ex- exciting, very exciting for us. Mate, it's got it's got the makings of a fantastic event. I mean, the the only um, or the first dive show that I went to when I got here in 2018 was. Um, a, a very small dive show that was just swallowed up by the boat show. Um, so much so that a lot of the staff that were in the grounds didn't even know where the dive show area was. You know, it was, uh, mm. it was just, it was just drowning underneath a lot of boats. So to have an independent show that is all for diving and to have this lineup of individuals on the stage, giving their, their talks is, is, uh, it's going to be something that's fantastic and brand new really. Um, yeah. I think we've yeah. had, like uh, TDEX, uh, you know, we've had presentations at TDEX and Sue Crow and the team do a fantastic job with that. Um, but that's um, that's purely uh, technical, isn't it? So that having a show like this that is open to everyone from DSD through to the the, the tech hierarchy, it's um, it's superb to get everyone in one place. Yeah, yeah, I think that. I mean, that was a, a bit of the reasoning behind uh, trying to emulate what we do in the UK as as just having a you know, a, a recreational dive show open to absolutely everybody, you know, from your, your experienced diver down to your, your newbies and uh, and families, trying to get families involved as well. Because obviously you want to uh, grow the industry and you're only going to do that with new divers and younger divers, the next generation. So, yeah, it was, it was uh, um, hopefully it has something for everybody. Uh, I think, you know, we've got a lot of interactive elements as well to the show. You know, we've got the... The try dive pool. We've we've got a, a demo pool where there are going to be demonstrations of various things going on. I think it's, uh, uh, we've got a Shark Bus Museum, uh, which should be interesting. Uh, we've got uh, VR uh, areas, um, and yeah, lot, lots of lots of interactive elements, and of course, uh, a fantastic lineup of uh, of speakers. The guys of um, done a great job uh, getting uh, yeah speakers across all, all kind of um, disciplines in uh, in the diving world. You know, from tech and cave, you know, through to photography and um, yeah, travel as well. Uh, got a strong travel element to the show, uh, which should be good as also. So uh, yeah, and of course Steve Backshaw, which, uh, which yeah. We're looking forward to. Yeah, that's a that's a good grab to get him coming over. Yes, especially seeing as he's uh, he's recently been on uh, mainstream TV over here. Uh, I think it was on ABC. He was on with the uh, documentary about whales. Mm-hmm. So, and he's he's done a couple of talks before for uh, for us at the UK show. So he's going to do this year. He's going to do A and Z, and then next year he's doing UK again. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was good to get a um, a headline headliner a headliner like uh, like Steve involved. Yeah, well, what, one of the many questions I keep getting asked, and I just redirect people to the Go Diving Show uh, webpage, it's GoDivingShow.com, is you know when the speakers are on, whether it's just one day or two days, and um, off the bat, there, I mean, Steve Backshaw. He's on both the Saturday and the Sunday on the main stage, isn't he? Yeah, we've got uh, the the main stage speakers, uh, people like uh, Jill Heiner, uh, obviously uh, Steve Backshaw, um, Pete Measley. Uh, who else have we got on there? Uh, uh, Richard Harris. Richard Harris, yeah, Liz is Parkinson. on the main stage as well. Yeah, uh, I tell you what, let's let's have a let's have a run through the guys, shall we? Because there'd be we're, we're we're naming people. There might be listeners that just don't know all of them that we're talking about. Um, so, Steve Backshaw, let's start with the big fella. Um, do you want to yes. do you want to give a little overview of who Steve Backshaw is for the Aussies that don't know him? 
Well, Steve Backshall is, well, how would you describe Steve? I suppose he's a, a TV personality, TV presenter. Um, he does the Deadly 60, uh, which we get over here and, and is in the UK. As I mentioned, he's, he's done various documentaries. Uh, yeah, how to describe him? He's, um, yeah, very enthusiastic. Um, I, I think very family orientated kind of his, his target uh, market I think is, is quite family or was until this this Wales um, documentary that he's done so he's an explorer uh, and yeah uh, yeah very very entertaining individual um, when, uh, when when you see his show so yeah I, th I suppose his most famous uh, or most well-known programs would be the deadly 60s that he does. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a, a, a popular chap in the UK, and um, I must admit, I'm looking forward to seeing him on stage. Um, he's, like you say, very passionate, and um, I suppose he's a he's a slightly calmer version of Steve Irwin. He's not. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, but he loves his critters, um, yeah. and I'm sure he's got many a story that he can uh, relay on stage as well. Yeah, but only slightly calmer than Steve Irwin, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely very passionate. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, going from, going from the start on the Saturday, they've, they've got the, the first speaking event on the main stage there is at 9.45. And that's um, the little legend himself, Nays Bagai, um, and diving into the darkness. And um, I've got to applaud this chap. I mean, he's been on the podcast before. And, um, you know, a very... Um, small and, and relatively quiet chap, but his skill with a camera and trying to portray a story and get a get the communication across through his movies, his doco movies, is just exceptional, isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we've we've got this screening of diving into the darkness uh, on the main stage, so uh, yeah that that will be that will be very interesting. I think. Um, yeah, I've. I've I've not met Nays, but yeah, I've heard a lot about him. Of course, he did a um, uh, a diving with column as well with with PT. Um, so yeah, in, interesting yeah. chap. So yeah, looking forward looking forward to that on the main stage definitely. Uh, and then oh and yeah, then... sorry, I got that I got that slightly wrong there, didn't I? So the the, the showing is on the main stage nine forty five to eleven fifteen. Yes. And then Nays is on the inspiration stage at two forty five. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we've got bad. the diving into the darkness, uh, and then seamlessly that follow flows into um, uh, that's nine forty five to eleven fifteen, and then eleven thirty. The first speaker will be Jill Hynath herself. Yeah, yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know diving into the darkness, it's all about Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, exactly. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're looking forward to to, to having uh, Jill there. She's speaking, uh, as I said, eleven thirty to twelve fifteen on on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday uh, she's going to be on the tech stage uh, from one forty five to two thirty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, inc incidentally, for if there's anyone out there that can't make it to this uh weekend event at the go diving show jill and nays will be at the hayden orpheum in sydney um october 1st through to october 7th and they're showing diving into the darkness there and jill and nays will be around for i think it's the first three nights or maybe four nights where they'll be doing some q and a's afterwards as well so we'll put that link into the show notes for anyone who can't be around or is away for the for the go go diving show and can't make it to this uh, this weekend um right so J once jill's finished we've got uh we've got richard dr richard harris coming on stage and i'm sure every aussie in in the world probably knows who uh, richard harris is <laughs> or they should do yes absolutely from the thai cave uh uh rescue um although he uh obviously he's a um passionate cave diver and uh, i think his his stories do extend beyond uh the thai cave uh rescue um yeah he, he's probably bored of telling <laughs> telling that one now almost <laughs> uh probably everyone asks him to, to speak about that but yeah he's uh he's going to be um he's on the saturday yes 12 30 to 1 15 uh 
and then he's back on the Sunday as well at 10.15 to 11.15 for if uh, people can't make it on the Saturday, then he's yeah obviously there on the Sunday as well. So right. he'll be recounting some of his stories. Uh, Is there anything in particular that he's going to be looking at? Or recounting, sorry? Um, uh, where is he? Quick look. Richard. The Lure of the Deep. So he explains how his interest in uh, deep technical diving arose. Um, now he's used his experience and knowledge to explore some of the world's deepest caves. Uh, the latest expedition to Bushman's Hole in South Africa, um, which ended uh, in a dive to nearly 284 metres. Wow. Um, <laughs> and, and a brush with decompression sickness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did read about that. Yes, uh, and then uh, hydrogen in deep diving. Uh, so he's also going to talk about the use of hydrogen to push the limits of deep diving. Um, so yeah, that, that should be uh, should be very interesting. Mm, yeah. Not a single mention of the the uh, the Thai cave dive rescue. So uh, he's clearly moving on for that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, so after after Richard, we got Steve. We have got Baxhall. Steve, Steve, yeah. Steve Backshall. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that should be a, a, a one thirty to two thirty. Uh, mm -hmm. That should be an interesting talk. Um, I'd say looking looking forward to that. Uh, we've had him before in the UK, so uh, he's he's always very popular. Always brings a crowd. So looking forward. And to then we've got him. the then we've got the Kiwi himself. The uh, <laughs> Mr. Lust the for Rust, Lust, uh, Lust for Rust, <laughs> Pete Mesley. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but we just we've actually just uh, in the August issue of the magazine, we just uh, published uh, uh, an extended length feature on the wrecks of New Zealand that uh, um, Pete did for mm -hmm. us. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, the uh, one of his pictures made the front cover. His um, his, his images are spectacular of, uh, of wrecks. The way. He, manages to light them all up um so yes looking forward to uh to hearing from from pete um, yeah we... i mean he's he's really good on stage as well and the amount of passion he's got in what he does it's it's fabulous to watch so i expect that one to be well i expect all of them to be very busy uh, but that one in particular yes yeah absolutely um... so <laughs> So yeah, he's uh, he's two forty five to two three thirty on the Saturday, and then again on the Sundays one forty five to two thirty. Yep. Uh, and then we have finally for the Saturday we have Liz Parkinson. Yes. Now so, I think this is going to make a very interesting topic as well. You know, looking at Liz's background and what she does now. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that, like um, stunt woman and uh, tech diver and everything. So, yeah, that should be, uh, should again be another interesting one. Uh, so yeah. Liz is, Liz is 345 uh, on the Saturday and then she is 1130 to 1215 on the Sunday. Happy days. Um, and then so, yeah. this, is, this is where people are going to have to make decisions because there's a bit of an overlap because we've got, we've got the main stage, then we've also got the inspiration stage and the tech stage. So and the people photography are going to have to stage. make a choice. Oh, and the photography and stage as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have yes. to flick flack all over the place, ladies and gents, and, and decide who you want to go and see before you get there, I think. Yes. Well, the um, you've got the the main stage and the ANZ slash inspiration stage are are in the main hall. Mm -hmm. So, you, if, I mean, opposite ends of the hall, but it's quite easy to uh, to, to kind of flip between the two if if, if you so desire. Uh, yeah. The tech stage and the photography stage have, have kind of got their own little um, own little wounds. So yes, then there are choices to be made. Uh, Depending on on what your preference is, uh, yeah. So yeah, on on the uh, so on the on the photog oh sorry on the um, ANZ and inspiration stage. Uh, first up, 
we have uh, who, who will start at 10.30. The other stages will start mm -hmm. at 10.30. It's just the uh, main stage starts 9.45, starts early because of the, the film screening. The other stages will yeah. start at 10.30. Inspiration stage is going to start off, uh, ANZ slash inspiration stage is going to start off with a talk from uh, the Master Reef Guides. Yeah. Which is um, a great program in, uh, in Queensland uh, where they train their, their guides up um, to be not only very uh, conservationally aware, but, um, you know, to, to understand the reef a lot more, to, to give visitors a... Uh, uh, a better experience of the reef and a and a safer experience uh, and a more environmentally conscious um, experience as well. So uh, that's kind of a unique thing for for here in um, in Queensland. Uh, so yeah, oh, that, is, that, that's great. Is is the Master Reef Guides um, independent, or is it a paddy thing, or an SSI thing? Is it a is it an agency thing, or does it stand alone? No, it's. Uh, it's a standalone thing. I, I, from what I understand, it's an initiative uh, that um, has been kind of championed by a, a lot of the operators in in Queensland to um, you know to, to provide a better experience. Uh, but I believe it is organised and um, done by who is it the uh, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority. Gotcha, gotcha. Let me just. And then following check. the following the match of the reef guides, we've got um, the lovely lady Ronnie on the stage at eleven thirty. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's the yeah. Sorry, going back to that one. It's the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Association, I believe, who. Um, yeah, who kind of run the master reef guides. Uh, so yes, then we gotcha. have uh, Ronnie, who's going to be uh, talking about the Philippines, one of our, uh, yeah, kind of destination um, talks. Uh, so obviously Philippines, uh, vast area, fantastic kind of variety of diving there. So Ron is going to be talking about the various different dive areas and regions and kind of what you can expect Um if you are looking for a trip to the Philippines, which should be very she knows interesting. she knows that you've only given her forty five minutes, right? Because this lady gets very passionate about the Philippines. She can talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, and look, actually, one thing I should mention as well, just um, going back to the main stage, the uh, the whole event uh, or or the whole main stage is is going to be emceed by uh, Anthony Gordon. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, missed him, huh? So his, his name's not in the list, so because <laughs> <laughs> he's not actually a speaker as such, but he is the glue that is going to hold the uh, the main stage together. Uh, so yeah, Anthony's uh -huh. um, as I say, he's a passionate filmmaker himself. Uh, you know, very much in, involved or keen to get the next generation of diver involved in um, in, in diving in the sport. Uh, yeah, he's he's a a very passionate, very enthusiastic guy. He's gonna, he's going to make a, a great MC, I think. Uh, he'll he'll be hosting. Also, forgot to mention that uh, the final um, the final slot on the main stage at the end of Sunday at two forty five to three thirty is like going to be a panel session that will be hosted by yes. Anthony. So we have uh, some okay. of the main stage speakers um, kind of doing a bit of a panel session. Bit of a Q and A. Happy days. Uh, so yeah, that that would be good. Um, but back to uh, ANZ slash Inspiration stage. Uh, yes, we we have Ronnie, uh -huh. and yes, she is aware it's forty five minutes. Um, following <laughs> from that, we we have um, Tori Clett, who's uh, who's from Sea Shepherd. Tori's going to talk about some of the. Um, the things that they've got going on at the moment we've we've kind of featured them in the conservation section a couple of times and yeah they've got some um some amazing projects going on at the moment uh conservation projects so yeah that that'll be another very interesting talk mm, mm. yeah um and then we've got terry Cummins, the legend that is yes 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, Terry is uh, going to be talking about his favourite topic, which is uh, diving in Queensland and, and the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, you know, the conservation side of things a bit and, um, you know, just, just uh, putting into perspective, I think, also kind of what, what the, the, what's happening on the Barrier Reef um, at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that, that will be... Um, that will be that will be Terry. I'm sure be a very informative talk from Terry. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I think if there's if there's a few people in the world that uh, know a lot of information about certain areas, and I think if you want to know a lot about the Great Barrier Reef, then Terry's probably one of those guys. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he's um, he's possibly one of the better informed of uh, of, of what's going on there. So uh, that that should be good, and of diving in Queensland in general. And he's just um, yeah, he's just kind of brought Dive Queensland back to life as well. Uh, so uh, to to help promote diving in Queensland, so that that that's uh, really great for that Terry's got that back up and running again. We've we've literally just got back um, two days ago, and we went with our mates. Um, they've got a a little dive boat of their own, so we went uh, just the four of us and spent three nights out around the uh, Lady Musgrave and um some of the surrounding reefs like Llewellyn and it was mm. just fabulous we, you know when you get those rare moments where the sun's out and it's just glass flat there's literally not a ripple of water movement <laughs> at all we had pristine conditions and um dare I say it was surprisingly stunning and then to find a couple of dives where we had plenty of mantas obviously mm. um, but one melanistic and a pink manta ah the pink panthers around is it <laughs> Yeah, for the pink panther. Um, <laughs> I've never, I've never seen a pink manta with my own eyes before. And um, no, the, no, I the haven't. first time I thought I was like, nah, it's too many whiskeys <laughs> last night or something. But it came around again. I'm like, yep, yeah, definitely pink. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed it, but we, we, uh, someone submitted a piece on it for for the magazine. Um, so yeah, I've seen pictures of it. So yes, it's uh, yeah, strange looking thing, but there we go, pink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some fantastic dives uh, along the along the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you know, it's just so massive. There's so many places that are rarely dived that are in pristine mm. condition. It's um, yeah. There's uh, yeah, well worth uh, making the effort to, to to get there. Yeah, yeah. I think it gets a bit of a, a bad rep with people saying that it's all dying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but for the bits that are dying and the damage that's happening naturally and through bleaching, there's, there's an awful lot of it that's not seeing that kind of stuff at all. It's, it's stunning. Yeah. Yeah, no, mm. absolutely. I mean, it's thousands of kilometers long, you know, I think it gets possibly exaggerated what's, uh, what, what's happening to it. Uh, of course there, it is under stress, but uh, yeah, as I say, um, but I think Terry's going to uh, delve into that a little bit deeper as he's got um, probably a lot more knowledge than uh, than you and I on that. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then following Terry, we've got Nays, who we mentioned earlier on. He's on from 2.45 to 3.30. Yes. And that's then... Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've uh, we've, we've got Nays. So, uh, again, looking forward to, to hearing uh, to hearing him. That, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, following on from Nays, we've got um, Deborah Dixon-Smith, who's... Um, Obviously, uh, going to talk about all things travel and um, destinations, up, up and coming destinations, and so on. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, uh, to, to hearing Deborah as well. Yeah. And uh, should we do the should we do the Sunday of the inspiration stage, or do you want to move to the tech stage on the Saturday? Or should we go? Um. Let's. Uh, I, mean, I suppose we might as well just go through the the stage on the sunday as well then since we're we're in that region um so yes yeah, kicking off on the sunday 10 30 to 11 15 we've uh we've got danny charlton of um of murex uh, resort yeah. fame and lembe so uh yeah he is going to be talking about um indonesia as a destination that vast destination uh, and kind of um, what um, what's on offer there, so uh, that uh, we're looking forward to as well. 
that's another one that's a, a lot to squeeze into 45 minutes, isn't it? Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I think it'll have to be the highlights. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Now, what's um, following on from Danny? We've got uh, James Hunter at eleven thirty to twelve fifteen. What's what's James going to be talking about? Well, James uh, is um, yeah, very interesting chap. Uh, so, uh, James is uh, a, a doctor um, of uh, archaeology. He works for the uh, Maritime Museum in Sydney. Uh, and he's been involved with finding the uh, Cook's uh, Endeavour. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they, um, they've, they've, they've discovered that um, off Newfoundland, I think it is. Uh, anyway, so he's, he's going to be talking about um, archaeology, in, in particular uh, marine archaeology, and in particular about the, how, how they found and um, pieced together information to find the Endeavour. So yeah, he's. I mean, he's another one with many, many great stories. Uh, but I think this mm. one he will focus on the endeavour because obviously it's got a strong connection to um, to Australia. Yeah, yeah. And on the stage after James, we've got Holly Wakeley, who I had a yes. I had a brief email back and forth with her earlier this week for another forty five minutes, twelve thirty to one thirty. Oh, she's on for an hour. Yes. Uh, well, Holly is. Um, is that one of the youngest ever course directors? Uh, it's yeah. not the youngest. They're not um, entirely 100% positive, but they, they, they're thinking she might even be the, the youngest course director. Uh, so, yeah, she's just a, an inspirational figure for, uh, for for the next generation, for younger people uh, to, to get into diving. Uh, so, yeah, she'll be she'll be talking about, you know, what, what what got her involved and her passion for uh, for diving and teaching people. So... Uh, yeah, that that's another, yeah. uh, as I say, inspirational person who's, who's going to be on the stage. Well, if you're a, a young person that's listening to the show, then definitely earmark that one, pencil it in your diary or even in your phone nowadays, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> Holly Wakeley would definitely be one to worthy of listening to because she's flown up through the ranks from, I think she started when she was about 13. Uh, yeah. I think it was open water at 13 or maybe even, no, in fact, junior water, junior open water. Uh, younger um, but then to be sat at 21 at, at course director it's uh, it's quite a feat so yes yeah youngsters listen to holly follow her <laughs> guidance <laughs> absolutely um and then we have um from 145 all the way through to the end 330 we have a, a double dose of uh uh mateus uh from dan he's the uh he is the head medical guy at Dan, and he's coming over from from the US uh, to to ha to talk and have a Q and A session. Um, so yeah, that that's um, apparently again he's another one, as you can probably imagine, with with quite a few interesting stories. Yeah, yeah, he's certainly one that I'm keen to go and have a, a listen to, and maybe throw a few questions his way and make myself look even more stupid than I usually do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's yeah. uh, he's been I think he's been with Dan a long long time hasn't he? Yes. Like maybe yes, in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah um, he he has been uh he has been there a long time. So, um yeah, he's vice president of medical services. Uh so uh yeah, he he's been uh working with Dan since 2006. Wow. Yeah. Long enough. Yeah. 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 Okay. Almost twenty years. So that rounds out the um, that rounds out the inspiration stage for the weekend. Um, yep. Is there anyone MC in that stage, or is it just flowing on its own? No, that's um, that's going to be flowing on its own. Hopefully, gotcha. Uh, yeah, no. Um, as I say, we've got uh, the main stage is uh, is, is, is uh, uh, Anthony's Anthony's domain. Uh, yeah, the others we we're just hoping there can be. Um, left to their own devices a little bit more. Um, <laughs> or we'll, I mean, we'll be there and kind of thereabouts as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. we'll just have to check, double check with Ronnie then because Matthias could be finishing at 7.30 at night if you allow a run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're on different days, so I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
jokes, Ronnie, jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's um, let's take a, a look at the tech stage on what's happening over the weekend. Tech stage, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, kicks off again, as I said, that will be uh, 10.30. Uh, and uh, John Kendall kicks us off on that one, I believe, at 10.30. He's um, he's another one that's into the archaeology and stuff, isn't he? Oh, photogrammetry. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 3D uh, photo uh, telemetry. Uh, so, yeah, he's... he's uh, uh, and, and obviously he's a bit of an explorer as well. Uh, and tech, obviously, tech diver. So, yeah... Uh, but yeah, he's he yeah he he does do a bit of archaeology also. So uh, mm. that's going to be uh, that's going to be who's kicking off the uh, the tech stage, uh, and then at eleven thirty to twelve fifteen we have Mike Mason, who I think's been on the podcast. Yes, he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Mike. Who again? Another one I was chatting with last week. Um, yes. So for so the human uh, diver, um, yeah, I'm looking yeah. for I'm looking forward to that as well. I think uh, you know combining a, a <clears throat> his um, his experiences as a as a, as a uh, jet fighter in the uh, in the air force uh, with uh, with diving and uh, that uh, yeah that should be, that sounds like an interesting crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, Mike's career in the military, I mean, we, we were both in the Air Force in the UK, but Mike was a fighter pilot, and then he's now, he's over here in Australia, and he teaches qualified pilots how to use their um, jet as a weapons platform. So, you know, he's very humble about it, but in my opinion, he's like the kind of the guy that's teaching the Top Gun how to do their, their stuff when when it gets real. Um, yeah. So he's got a very level head, and I think with that background he's just he's the perfect man for delivering what we learn in the military about um the the the, the human factors uh, and bringing yeah. it into the diving world under the guidance of gareth lock i think he's uh he's going to do very well very well indeed. yes and he is already yeah yeah, yeah. no absolutely uh yeah that's uh that, that should be a, a great one to listen to i think uh and that following on from there, we have uh, twelve thirty to one fifteen. Uh, John Garvin. Mm -hmm. uh, so this dude, this dude's got a—he's a pretty interesting background, isn't he? Um, I was having a—I was having a look online the other day and um, writing screenplays for the likes of Sanctum and James Cameron's Deep Sea Challenge Three D. You know, um, and I must admit, I mean, it's the first time I've heard his name. Um, but yeah, very impressive CV. Yes, yes, he's he's a uh, yeah he's he's another one that will be uh, uh, one to uh, one to watch. Yeah, with his um, yeah with his uh, background in films. Um, yeah, should should have some uh, interesting stories to tell. I think. Um... I wonder if he was he was on the Avatar movie as well because I know Pete Mesley was involved in that one as well. Let's find out. I'm sure he was if he was messing around with James Cameron. I'm, I'm sure he's getting called on quite regular by the dude. Yes, it would make sense. Um, mm. I don't know. It doesn't. Um, yeah, he has. Uh, he's he has helped out on um, Avatar. Mm. So he knows his way around the film industry clearly. <laughs> Just a smidge, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on from there, we have Yana is up next, isn't she? Yes. Uh, again, uh, quite a uh, youthful an injection of youth into the uh, the speakers, um, tech stage speakers, uh, which is good. But youthful <laughs> with a uh, with quite an impressive CV already. Oh, yeah, just a bit. Yeah. What is it here? We've got uh, over the past 10 years, she has dived in over 35 destinations across three continents, all whilst balancing a career as a full-time global marketeer. And I just happened to dig a little deeper. In fact, 
I know that she's involved and in working with uh, McAllen Whiskey. So um, Yana, Yana um, there's a, a grey a gray bearded guy here that loves whiskey. So if you happen to bring some McAllen with you, just <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, she's going to be talking about her um, her adventures in in Greece, where she's taken part in numerous deep dives, uh, wreck identification dives, including the uh, Vickers Wellington bomber. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, that that will be uh, an interesting one for uh, for wreck enthusiasts. Yeah, I just see that she was. I can't even pronounce it. Var Yellen Eleven. Expedition exploring the cave system located beyond the Arctic Circle. Yes. Oh, it's in Norway. That's why I can't explain it. I can't read it properly. <laughs> Norwegian fjords. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, so that, that's Jana. and then of course we have the uh, the industry legend that is David Strike. Ah <laughs> yes. I've it's not. Sorry. I've yet to meet David, but he lives here in Sydney, and I just love his posts that he puts up on social media fabulous guy yeah yeah so uh yeah he's he's uh, uh yeah i mean he's um he was in the navy for uh for, for many years so uh he's got some exceptional stories uh to to tell um so he's going to be chatting about um probably about some of his experiences uh in the navy and depth diving limits and uh, navy diving um plus some Cautionary tales for techies and diving mishaps and misdemeanors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's uh, 245 to 330. Uh, and then rounding off uh, the Saturday at 345 to 430 is uh, Kerry Burrow. Mm. Uh, so Kerry's, um, Kerry's done a few articles for the magazine and um, she, she's. Uh, She's very much into her cave, uh, tech cave diving at the moment, um, but she she takes some stunning images as well. Um, so, um, yeah, great photographer, uh, and uh, very much um, into uh, uh, cave diving uh, at the moment. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fairly um, relatively new into. Um, in, into the into the diving in scene so you know not always nice to have a, a, a perspective from uh, someone who's kind of uh, not exactly starting her journey but you know um, kind of at the towards the beginning of it anyway um, so yeah. yeah that that uh, should make for I like the um, something a bit different yeah I had, a, I had a couple of emails back and forth with her just that was picking up while I was offshore and um, she was saying that she's going to be covering some insights and experiences in um, the caverns and caves of Australia, Europe and Mexico. And um, just giving some people an insight into, um, you know, cave diving with a camera and the um, the errors that she came along the way, learning points, the importance of safety and camera settings for low light conditions, all this kind of good stuff that if you want to get into this kind of photography and this kind of exploration, then or you know it's the early early stage stuff that you really need to know about so that you can actually focus on what you're doing rather than faffing around with a camera all the time so <laughs> i think if you're wanting to go into dark locations and maybe uh get your photography uh, up and running then maybe kerry would be a good one to have a listen to yeah yeah i, th I think so as i say as well you know her, her images are are stunning also so uh, yeah it's uh def definitely mm. one to listen to um so yeah, that's yeah. that's the tech stage for Saturday. Uh, then Sunday, mm -hmm. again, starting at ten thirty to eleven fifteen, we've um, got another Kiwi, Matt Carter. Yeah. Although, I, uh, is he a Kiwi or is he just living over there at the moment? Oh, he's Kiwi. Yeah, he's been on the show as well. He's um, he's a lovely chap, and. Um, He's, he's Australasia's leading technical diving marine archaeologist, and he's the research director for the Major Project, Projects Foundation. He's going to be speaking about the ghost wrecks of the Blue Pacific. Ah, good stuff. Sounds like an interesting yeah, topic. Yeah, that's, that's, so, that's yeah. a very interesting topic because they're trying to um, prevent the oils and fuels leaking out of these wrecks that are obviously decaying over years and uh, prevent the pollution of the surrounding seas. 
Yeah. And then after Matt, we've got um, a bit more of David. David's coming back for the Sunday, David Strike. So we'll have a bit more strikey on um, on Sunday. Uh, mm-hmm. And then follow that 12.30 to 1.30, uh, we're going to have Richard Taylor. Because I've got it listed here as Jill on at 12.30. Have we had a bit of a switch around? I've got, yeah, Richard Taylor, 12.30 to 1.30, and then Jill at 1.45 to 2.30. Uh, they gotcha. might have swapped them around a bit, but uh, that's what I've got on my list here. From... Gotcha. Um, what's, um, what's Richard Taylor going to be looking at? Have you got any insights? Obviously, tech diving guru, um, but just waiting to hear what he's going to be talking about. So no doubt, no yeah. doubt something fascinating. Um and then we've got, we've got oh, John's closing out the show on Sunday, isn't he, on the tech stage? John Kendall. Yes. All right. The, the, the last stage in the list, by no means the least important, um, no. is the photo stage. The photo stage, yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, we've, um, we've had a photo competition that's been run by um, Tim from Underwater Australasia and... Uh, and Brett from Underwater Images, Brett and Wayne. Um, so they've, they've organised a photo competition. There's going to be uh, results announced uh, at, the, um, at the show. Kicking off the photo stage, we have 10.30 to 11.15 is, uh, is Nigel Marsh. Uh, he's based up your way, isn't he? He is. Uh, yes, he's a, he's a fellow Queenslander here, here in Brisbane. Um, he has a regular column in the magazine, uh, Unique Australian Marine Life, uh, something which he is very impassionate about. Um, so, yeah, he's gonna, that's what he's going to be talking about, um, uh, the, the unique marine life you, you get around the shores of Australia. And following him, we've got my good buddy, Nico, Nicholas Remy. Yes. Um, yeah, I think, uh, what was Nicholas going to talk about? I think he was going to talk about... He's, he's going to talk about... The correct lens to choose for particular dives and critters and scenes and scenarios. Yeah, which is um, which is actually really useful because uh, it, you're always wondering what what lens you should be um, should be using. So I think that that will be uh, a very helpful talk from from Nicholas, who uh, knows his stuff as well. Uh, so so that should be good. Um, yeah, and He's then got, um, we have you. Have you have you popped on the underwater club at all? Do you know it's, what um, we've hmm. we've uh, we've actually just published an article on the underwater club. Uh, PT did a review of it, um, and I was actually speaking. I, I, I haven't had a chance to, um, to to look over it yet, but I was. Who was I speaking to? I was speaking to somebody recently, and they, and they said uh, that they've. Actually, it was uh, when I was in the Philippines recently. Um, a lady over there, her and her husband, they said they've they've joined it. Uh, so I was just chatting with them on the boat, um, and she said, "Yeah, they've joined it." And she said, "It's it's really good." She said, "It's fantastic. Um, you know, really helpful." She said, "It's a nice." Um, yeah. No one's looking to score points on anyone. She says it's really nice and friendly and informative. Everyone's looking to help each other. So she said it was really really nice forum for uh, you know sharing views and asking for help and so on hmm. well what, once a month he has like um guest speakers on so they do a webinar and they'll have a particular topic like um tobias was on there a couple of months ago um i think this month there's a lady on that's talking about editing in lightroom afterwards and the skills and drills yep. that we might not know about um but within the forum itself everybody is it's quite a, a nice i hate the word nice but it it, it, it rounds it out and well, nicely, <laughs> because it is nice. Um, yeah. They, he does um, put together little webinars for um, doing uh, photo critique. So people log in and you can offer up three or four of your photos and, you know, your peers will say, oh, well, what about this? What about that? And, you know, how to tweak the image to make it look stunning and give you a yeah. bit of a view that you didn't really look at your own photos in. It's it's, it's a good, mm. really useful yeah. tool. Yeah. Mm. Good. So yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to be. I about yeah. that for hours. I, I think it's a, a good. Yeah, um, yeah. No, that, that that's uh, yeah. I've, I've heard good reports about the club. So uh, yeah, Nicholas will be uh, sharing his wealth of experience. Uh, 
And then speaking of people with a wealth of experience, we've got Mike Bartik next, 1230 to 1115. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, what's, Mike, what's Mike's topic? So Mike's based in, uh, is, is uh, from the US, but he's based in, mainly based in the Philippines where he's got a resort. But he's, um, he's very much into blackwater diving. Uh, ah, he's, okay. He, he's a fantastic photographer. Uh, I mean, he, or, or, you know, his wide angle stuff's great, and his critter stuff is great. But uh, yeah, he's um, he's a big advocate of uh, of black water diving that I think he's going to be talking about on close focus wide angle as well. So, I tried it a couple. Of, I tried it a couple of times, and it's a skill in itself doing black water dives and photography. <laughs> yes, yeah, from what I hear. <laughs> Probably the best way to leave it, just hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think I think the results you can get are, are quite stunning. Um, mm. But yeah, I think it takes quite a lot of uh, dedication to the cause to because because you, you're kind of out there. At, from what I hear, you're out in the middle of the ocean, down at about twenty meters, and and you have you no orientation. You're on a line or something, and you just got to yep. swim along, and hopefully you bump into something. Yeah, yeah. We did it with, we had like a, a drop line in from the boat and just floated with the current. And uh, every five to eight meters, we just have a relatively dim lit fluoro light on the line. Uh, mm. That was your only point of reference, but that's what attracted the, the critters in as well. But yeah. trying to get your camera to focus on a critter in the dark <laughs> and take a photo of it whilst either holding a torch or getting your strobes to work correctly and at the right distance. It's a, there's a lot of ingredients there that can, you know, make the, <laughs> make the, make the cake go flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lead to a disappointing review of your images afterwards. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be experiencing or sharing some of his uh, experiences of, uh, of, of black water is Mike. Uh, he does have some, some great images. And then uh, we move on from there. One thirty to two thirty is, uh, is Brett. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett LeBoyne is another um, resident of Sydney, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Has he got a particular topic? Uh, I think um, I'm not sure what Brett's talking about. I know he's uh, obviously he's um, you know very big on uh, on conservation. Great photographer himself. Uh, well, I suppose it'll be a surprise, and we'll find out on the day, eh? Yes. Absolutely. So let's just see. And then that leads us into, as we spoke before, the competition. Then kicking off Sunday, 10.30 to 11.15 is Don Silcock. I love Don. I think there's many inspirational people in the world and in our, in our industry and our diving and all that kind of stuff. But Don, for me, is right up there as number one. I think he's a, a real inspiration and what he does is absolutely bloody fantastic. And uh, yes, for a man of his age and his size to try and drink pint for pint for me, he's crazy as well. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Don's a uh, his, his, um, yeah. is is a he's a proper adventurer now, isn't he? He he's all over, very very rarely at home, kind of all over the world. Um, he he uh, obviously contributes regularly to the magazine, um, and after a phone call with with Don. You, um, you're left green with envy uh, of the places he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's going to visit or has visited. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that, that will be interesting. Don's uh, obviously passion, I think, is for um, big animals. He's, he's, uh, that, that's, that's his preferred um, you know, topic. So he's going to talk about uh, uh, big animal encounters, kind of, um, you know how to shoot them and kind of where to find them where the best places to go to to find them uh so kind of emulating the column yeah. he has in the magazine uh, but yeah you're right don don is a uh an inspirational figure um yeah uh so yeah that, yeah he's been know. on the he's been on the podcast uh what three four times now i think it is and um we always have a good yarn and catch up with all the locations that he's been to but his his skill with the camera is just phenomenal you know he's as you say, he's, he appears on the front page and on the insides of the Scuba Diver magazine um, very, very regularly. 
and um, quite rightly yeah. so. You know, he's um, and just be fabulous. Just become a, a, is it a CCAM, um ambassador? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucky bugger. <laughs> so, yeah, so his good work is going noticed. That's good. And that's a that's a that's a very good way to kick off the Sunday morning as well. Yes, um, absolutely. Yes, get uh, the stage going. And then, uh, unfortunately, um, we were due to have Matty Smith eleven thirty to twelve thirty, but his uh, uh, work commitments come up that he ha- he can't get out of that he's got to go away for. Oh, that's a shame. I was I was hoping to meet him and grab him for jumping on the podcast at some time. We've we've been to a couple of events now where paths have crossed, but it's like ships in the night. We've never actually met. Yes, I was looking forward to 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 meeting Matty as well. Again, his his uh, his images are, are, are fantastic. He's got some stunning images. Mm. Um, in fact, he was on the he was on the front cover not long ago with one of his split shots uh, in Antarctica. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, I was hoping to meet Matty. Never mind, maybe uh, next year. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for the twelve thirty to one thirty, um, we've got Mike Scotland who's going to be coming along and talking uh what's mike talking about uh i would say that he's going to be doing something to do with uh marine biology because that's where he's a marine biologist but he's also the editor and publisher of dive log australasia isn't he yeah i believe again he was going to be talking about um some of the uh um marine biology in particular around kind of australia and then one forty-five to two thirty, we've got Craig Parry, who's a, obviously another award-winning photographer. Because his photography is is fine art photography, isn't it? So um, he's using that to forge a connection between viewers and the natural environment. So just a, right. a different take on photography, isn't it? Yeah. He's a, hold on a sec. He's another one that was involved with James Cameron. Secrets of the Octopus. Which came out uh, April this year. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. Then finally, we've got um, Talia. Yes, lovely lady. Talia Green. Yes, and, and another great photographer. Um, yeah, she is. This last year, she's been knocking it out of the park, hasn't she? Um, yeah, she was. She was on a podcast with uh, Vanessa. Uh, I think it must have been last year, sometime. And she was very humble, you know, and um, all of a sudden, you know, a couple of wins here and there has just gone boom through the roof. And she seems to be taking the world by storm right now with her photography. Yeah, absolutely. And and deservedly so, because she, she makes some beautiful images. And we've talked about maybe um, her doing some stuff in, in the magazine as well. Uh, so fabulous. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing more of, of Talia, not just at the show, but also in the um, in the magazine. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Yes, yeah. I think she's going to submit an article about diving in Sydney for uh, for one of the upcoming issues, which um, which will be great uh, to couple that with her photography. Um, will be good. Yeah. Now that's, um, all, that's all the speakers at the show. Um, what else have we got going on? Because I'm just having a quick look now. There's all sorts of interactive little areas. Um, for people to effectively have a play around and have a go with, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we wanted to make this show something that, that's, as, as we said before, kind of appeal to everybody. Uh, and I think having interactive elements is, is it, it makes it a more attractive proposition for people to come. Obviously, the free the show is, is free of charge for entry for this first year, at least anyway. Uh so we should we're expecting to get you know a lot of a lot of visitors through the door the speakers certainly will will help um but yeah we also wanted to to make it something that a uh, you know a family could turn up to and and there's still be plenty of stuff to do rather than you know if you're not that you know if you're not if you're fairly new to diving or or you don't know who a lot of these speakers are or or you're not really fussed about hearing them um i i know i certainly am um but you know what, what, whatever people want to do but to, to have things like these try diving pool where you know people can can have a go 
um, try diving for the first time, to have the demo pool where we're going to have various um, skill sets uh, if it's been shown. And um, also, uh, I know a couple of the photography guys want to do drone um, uh, shows as well uh, in the uh, in the demo pool. Uh, we've got the Shark Bus Museum that's going to be there that people can um, wander around. The guy who runs that is very interesting chap, very passionate about sharks. So you know, does a good talk about 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 sharks and conservation and so on. Uh, we've got uh, the book signing zone as well. So there's going to be people like Steve Backshaw um, doing book signing. Uh, we've got the VR uh, zone. Also, uh, we're hopefully going to have two VR zones because we've got the Royal Navy are, um, uh, are coming. Oh, I saw that, yeah. That's good. Yes. Uh, so they're, they're going to be the um, the Navy clearance divers uh, are going to be there. So they're going to have a few people talking about kind of what it takes to be a Navy clearance divers. So they're going to have all the equipment they use. Um they're talking about bringing um, some VR rigs as well, uh, so um, so you can do like a walkthrough of uh, of one of the subs and a frigate. Obviously, it's uh, it, it's free to free to get in, but people do need to register. How's the numbers looking? Have you got people registered already? Yes, uh, actually, Ross is um, is pleasantly surprised at. Uh, how many uh, people we've got we've got signed up so far? Uh, oh yeah. Normally, said for the UK show, he said you you kind of only only a, a couple of weeks or a week or even the day of of the show you kind of get people registering. Um, yeah. But um, especially f- as this is a free event, he said you know it's pe- people don't think to register because they, they you know they, they think oh you don't need to to, to get tickets so much so. Um, but yeah, we've. We're, we've uh, already got a, a couple of thousand or so registered, so we're expecting, um, you know, we're aiming for two and a half thousand per day, roughly. Probably a few more yep. on the Saturday than there will be on the Sunday. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're we're well on track for mm. for that. As I say, you, you wouldn't expect people to to be signing up, uh, registering um until a week or so <clears throat> or even the day of the event so yeah it's uh it's looking really positive and yeah. plenty of exhibitors you know over 70 uh exhibitors which is great for our for our first show uh yeah so oh, that's yeah superb yeah <clears throat> yeah we're uh happy days. yeah we're confident it's going to be uh a, a great event and um I think we've we've already booked the showground for the next four years, uh, so uh, mm. it's going to be beginning of September from from twenty five onwards. So yeah, we're confident yeah. that uh, that it can become a uh, a mainstay of uh, of the diving calendar. Um, like we said at the beginning, you know, I think um, Australia has been been missing a uh, a purely you know standalone recreational dive show. In, in its calendar um, every year, so uh, hopefully that's uh, that's well. I think that is something we're going to provide um, and going forward that will just go from strength to strength. So yeah, really, really looking forward to yeah. this uh, this first show now. Likewise, likewise. Well, I think we'll um, I think we'll round it out at that one, Adrian. And um, yes. obviously, you mentioned earlier on that it's free to enter, but people need to or should register that they're coming so where where do they find that information how do they register so again that's um that's on the website you you click on uh the obviously go to the go diving show website click on a and z show uh and then there's a tab that says tickets cool cool all right yes. well thanks for joining me Good. this afternoon yeah thanks very much for having me uh and uh look forward to uh to, to catching up at the show tip top that will close us out for now. And um, hey, listeners, uh, stay safe, stay having fun, keep getting wet. Ciao for now.